God does not intimidate. Intimidation is one of the tools of witchcraft. Now, now, as a preacher in a rural environment, in a rural place on the continent of Africa, <laughs> we have contended with all kinds of witchcraft. And part of the education I will give you as time goes on is witchcraft. How is it? How does he operate? How do you break his power? You're welcome to Reminant TV. On Reminant TV, you'll be getting powerful messages that will change, transform your life for good. Please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Satan is not afraid of religion. Satan will even create many more religions so that it will be difficult for someone to stumble on God. Satan is only antichrist. So what the Jewish ruling council were afraid of was Christ, the name of Jesus. Because they discovered through the interview they had with Peter and John that the catalyst that was responsible for the miracle that they could not deny came from the accurate use of the name of Jesus. So it means that the name of Jesus has a potency that can illegitimize their spiritual position in the territory. They can say any other thing. They can preach prosperity. They can tell people about good life, good things, possible things, but don't talk about Jesus. Is that clear? Okay. And they call them, meanwhile, they, they, they tool that they were going to use to stop the spread of preaching in the name of Jesus was intimidation. God does not intimidate. Intimidation is one of the tools of witchcraft. Now, now, as a preacher in a rural environment, in a rural place on the continent of Africa, <laughs> we have contended with all kinds of witchcraft. And part of the education I will give you as time goes on is witchcraft. How is it? How does he operate? How do you break his power? Now, you see, these guys are supposed religious people, but they were reaching out to take advantage of a utensil in the kingdom of darkness to accomplish their intention. The reason why they needed intimidation, which was one of the tools of witchcraft, was because what they wanted to accomplish was not in God's will. So they will need a tool borrowed from the flesh to accomplish it. So they say, let us threaten them. Let us intimidate them. And the intention is that it spread no further. Do you realize that if we continue like this, witches will take notice of us and they will want to do something to ensure that the potential that we have in the grace of God will not be maximized. Are you there? Okay. And then they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, not teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God. So the people that are working up for God, are you there? Yes, sir. The people working for God measured everything that they did from the lens of how it will appear in the sight of God. It is possible for a pastor no longer to be in God's work because he no longer, his, 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 his perspective, the reason, his strategy, his approach to life, to ministry, if it is not derived from, how does God perceive this thing? Are you there? Yes, now, so you see, the emphasis of our apostolic ancestors was that they wanted to know how God perceived things. So they confronted the Sanhedrin and said, Georgie, is it right? How did he put it? And Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it is right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than God, Georgie. For we cannot but speak of the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them. 
because of the people for all men glorified God for that which was done for the man was above 40 years old on whom the miracle of healing was showed. Verse 23 is my emphasis. When they let them go from the interrogation table, when they let them go from the, the torture table, there were many options of places that could have visited. Maybe the hospital, the post office, the bank. But when these guys were let go, the Bible says they went straight to their own company. You see, they went to their family. They went to church. The civilization that God built among our apostolic fathers was tied to the local church. People just experienced interrogation just now. They experienced threats. So you can imagine the kind of threats that came. There was a first layer of threats. And then when they responded and said, you judge, is it better for us to, in the sight of God, is it better for us to obey you than to obey God? Then the guys now stepped up the threats to another level. So even though they wanted to do something else, the only utensil they had to accomplish, the kind of thing they intended to implement were threats, were intimidation, was witchcraft tools, because they were not working for God. The utensils that are used to accomplish a task, we reveal whether it is God's work we are doing or is someone else's work. When they left the place, they did not stop by the gas station. When they left the place, they did not stop by the bank. The Bible says, being let go, the first point of call was their company. If you understand the things that I intend to teach this morning, you will find how powerful it is for you to have a company. Because in the apostolic civilization, the company was the platform where everything that gave them individual capacity was derived. Many of us in this place, maybe you can testify, you can accept if it is true. You had a, an epileptic prayer line and then you came to a company. A company of people that have found a certain type of grace which is the grace of intercession and supplication. And when you came into the company, you were afflicted with a virus that was responsible for their condition. And after a while, you now discovered that your prayer wings shoot out. Now, this is the idea. What, when God wants to give things to, to, to the individual, when God wants to pass things out on the individual level, what he does is that he releases it in the company. And then when you are connected to that company, your deliverables will come to you. That's how God does it. So there are several things you might, even though your personal prayer life is robust, and you are in tune with God, and you even, once upon a time, once in a while, you get taken to heaven to see things. There are things that God cannot give you as an individual. And I'm going to show you in a moment of time. You will need to be in a company situation for God to be able to give you those things. Because those things are not really personal. Those things are corporate. For instance, the anointing that is upon my life right now is not a personal anointing. No, it's not for personal. No, it's not personal. Even though the anointing is on me, it is not mine. It is for the company. Now, God will need to move us from the individual philosophy and bring us into the company philosophy. Because in order for God to exercise his intention as father, to exercise his intention as a just judge, he takes the solitary and he puts them in families. That becomes the platform that will afford him the opportunity to accomplish the kind of things he intends to do. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. 